Hey guys, after significant hiatus, AMD has finally unveiled their next generation mid-range GPUs, and I must say, they kind of nailed it. At following Nvidia and not really adding anything new or exciting to the current market. Here we have the two new cards, the 7700 XT and 7800 XT. These are priced at $450 and $500 respectively, and to be honest, they're a pretty good deal for many people. But I feel AMD missed the opportunity to be the good guy and shake up the market. Let's get into what I mean. Starting with what you get for your money. Both of these cards feature the latest RDNA 3 chiplet design, and they're not skimping on any of the cool stuff. We'll talk about all the fancy features you'd find in the 7900 XT and XTX models. The second gen AMD Infinity Cache, the fresh hour of the lab AI and ray tracing accelerators, as well as the new media engine supporting AV1 encoding. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty details of these bad boys. The 7700 XT is packing a punch with its 54 compute units and RT accelerators, not to mention a general 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, clocking in at a speedy 18 gigabits per second, all riding on a 192 bit bus. The total board power for this beast can go up to 245 watts. The 7800 XT flexes with 60 CUs and RT accelerators. It has a beefier 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, running it at 19.5 gigabits per second on a 256-bit bus. The spec difference may not seem like a massive deal, but they result in a whopping 44% boost in the memory bandwidth, and that's definitely not something to dismiss lightly. AMD has strategically positioned the 7700 XT to go head to head with the Nvidia's 4060 Ti. And this matchup seems like a slam dunk, given the 4060 Ti's underwhelming value proposition. However, the real showdown unfolds when the 7800 XT takes on the performance of Nvidia's 4070. And that's where the things get really interesting. But before we dive into that matchup, let's talk a bit more about how we conducted our benchmarking. We used a combination of AMD and Nvidia cards ranging from last and current gen, and testing was carried out on a Ryzen 7 bench with rebar enabled. For details of our benchmarking, you'll find the actual in-game settings right at the top of the graphs. Let's start with a quick verification of total board power. Here we ran Time Spy Extreme on loop and calculated average wattage using Nvidia PCAT, which measures power going through the PCIe slot as well as cables and found that both cards are bang on an advertised TBP. It's worth noting that while these cards do consume notably less power than the mighty 6900 XT, they do gulp down about 30 to 45 watts more juice compared to the RTX 4070. But hey, power isn't everything. Check out this graph showcasing performance per watt, where higher is better. Here we can see that both of these new AMD cards do trail behind their more premium siblings. Interestingly, 7700 XT managed to be about 7.2% less power efficient than the 7800 XT. The gap between 7700 XT and RTX 4070 in terms of power efficiency widens to noticeable 14.4%, and that's definitely something that raises some concerns. This is obviously a very simplified synthetic test. Let's now get into the gaming benchmarks and see how it translates. In Horizon Zero Dawn, at 1080p, we see 7700 XT beating 4060 Ti by about 10 average FPS, as well as 1% lows. Meanwhile, the 7800 XT dances to a different tune, boasting a nearly identical average FPS as to compare to 4070, with only a slight variation in the 1% lows. However, if you squint your eyes, you'll notice that most cards above 6900 XT tend to hover within run-to-run -run variance range here. Taking the resolution up a notch to 1440p, the high-end cards engage in a neck-to-neck -neck race, while the 7700 XT maintains its similar lead. To be honest, with any of these cards in your rig, you're in for a pretty nice gaming experience. Even the RX 7600 holds its own quite impressively. While AMD advertises these as 1440p cards, it's fascinating to see that in some cases they can hold their own even at 4K. If I were to pick between the two, the 7800 XT would be my preference in this scenario. Borderlands 3 is an AMD focused game, and while at 1080p, 7700 XT leads over 4060 Ti. The 4070 has a slight lead over 7800 XT. Again, the difference here is not huge, but it's interesting, especially since this game is one of AMD's advertised strongholds. Moving up to 1440p, the plot thickens with a similar performance trend. But there is a standout, the lead from the 4070 widens. However, when we dare to venture into the 4K territory, it becomes clear that neither of these cards is the wisest choice for an optimal experience. In the much lighter World War Z title, at 1080p, we see yet again 7700 XT beating 4060 Ti, and 4070 being a little faster, but only on 1% lows. 
In 1440p, we see 7700XD take a bigger lead and 7800XD is actually ahead by about 20 average FPS as well as 1 percentiles. It's noteworthy that the 7800XD even outperforms the 3090 in this title. In 4K, we see the same order when it comes to these four mid-range cards, which is essentially a final nail in the 4060 Ti's coffin when it comes to standard rasterized games. Now let's switch up the gears and delve into the ray tracing title, F1 2022. It's a more forgiving game to run, and with these cards you can comfortably enjoy it at 1080p. The 7800XD goes head to head with the 4070, and when we compare the performance improvement from the previous generation 6700XT to the 7700XT, we're looking at a whopping 50% boost in performance. It seems that the new accelerators are indeed earning their keep. At 1440p, it's a bit of the same, but still with playable frame rates. At 4K, we drop way below 60fps, and it makes no sense to use this resolution. For gamers who are seeking performance boost and are open to leveraging the upscaling technologies like DLSS and FSR, we've got the same game here starting at 1440p, as lower resolutions have already proven to be quite satisfactory. It's worth noting that we employ the performance presets for both DLSS and FSR, but keep in mind that these presets may vary from game to game. Our focus here is on the measurable performance metrics rather than the subjective aesthetics, allowing for a more objective assessment of gaming experience. Here both DLSS 2 and FSR 2.0 delivering very similar performance, and 7800XT inches out a small lead over 4070, while the lower end card continued to be closely matched just below. A notable advantage that NVIDIA 4000 series brings to the table is DLSS 3, which incorporates frame generation. With this feature enabled, 4070 makes a significant leap, securing a third position on the performance chart and nearly matching the performance of the 4090 with DLSS 2 enabled. Additionally, the 4060 Ti equipped with DLSS 3 is mostly beating 3080 and 3090 due to its better 1% lows. At 4K resolution, with upscaling enabled, we now have playable frame rates on all cards compared to the just pure 4K earlier. But here we stumble into some implementation problems. It appears that DLSS 3 in this particular game has persistent issues with 4K resolution, which prevents it from delivering substantial performance boost over DLSS 2. Due to this limitation, 7800XD manages to take a lead over 4070 in this context. By the way, if you like our content and would like to see more of it, do consider subscribing. Now let's jump into Cyberpunk 2077, starting with a non upscale version at 1080p. In this scenario, it is apparent unless you're equipped with 7900XTX or higher end GPU, achieving smooth gameplay can be a bit of a challenge. Interestingly, it's worth noting that both Nvidia cards outpace the new AMD cards in this context. There is no point of even showing 1440p or 4K, so we'll skip straight to the upscale results. At 1080p, we do have very playable FPS with the 4060 Ti taking the lead over both of the new AMD cards, with about 10 FPS lead just with DLSS2 enabled. The 4070 further widens its lead, and to add salt to the wound, both Nvidia cards are faster than the 7900XTX with DLSS 3 enabled. When we go up to 1440p, AMD 7700XT falls short of 60 average FPS mark, likely resulting in noticeable frame rate dips, while 7800XT is on the line of good enough. It's clear that in Cyberpunk, Nvidia cards just play no better, and the game appears to be more optimized for them. This applies to both brands. Certain games may perform more optimally on one brand's graphics card, while the others may favor the alternative. I would strongly recommend checking out what games you prefer playing and set your expectations before committing to any purchase. And ensure to do as much research as possible, as some reviews may have different benchmarking setups which may affect performance greatly. Before we close this off, I also collected some performance data in terms of productivity. Although it's worth noting that these cards aren't primarily tailored for creators, I'll provide a brief overview anyway. First, let's look at Blender Benchmark, where 7700XT clearly outperforms the previous generation 6700XT, and the 7800XT closely trails the last gen 6900XT. However, these AMD cards are outpaced by Nvidia's CUDA engine, and get completely destroyed when comparing the optics results. In a real world example, here is our custom Blender render, where 4060 Ti is using CUDA and is 6.5% faster than 7800XT, and it is 50% faster when using optics. Just like in gaming, productivity workloads can lean towards one brand or the other. Like in DaVinci Resolve, the new AMD cards exhibit a strong performance in Fusion Benchmark, which brings them closer to the top. While it's a pretty niche win, it's still a win. For those who are interested in buying these cards, we also conducted acoustic tests in our studio with noise floor of 35 dBA. The RX 7800 XT, the AMD variant, registered 35.2 dBA, 
While Sapphire Pulse 7700 XT didn't record anything above our noise floor, suggesting it's likely below 35 dBA. Both these cards can be considered remarkably quiet during normal operation. However, there are several crucial factors to consider before making a purchase. First and probably most important is what you intend to use the card for, which games and at what resolution. Additionally, it's essential to assess your comfort level of utilizing upscaling technologies like FSR and DLSS in your gaming experience. Nvidia boasts an impressive frame generation technology that, while not flawless, works wonders and provides a highly convincing experience. On the other hand, AMD recently announced their own frame generation tech, but it currently has limited support and will require time to mature into a valuable addition. There's also DLSS 3.5 on the horizon, which just shows that there's still a lot of development in this field. Another critical factor to consider is power efficiency. Currently, Nvidia cards are just plain better. With greater power efficiency comes lower heat generation, which necessitates cheaper coolers or less noise. Which leads us well to the conclusion. I immediately want to say that 7700 XT makes no sense at 450 US dollars. You should have been $400 or less to be directly competing with the RTX 4060 Ti, which we all know is not a good value. On the flip side, the 7800 XT emerges as an intriguing option. It undercuts the RTX 4070 by about $100. And if your gaming preference aligns with the titles that favor AMD architecture, then you'll be very happy with a more cost-effective solution. However, in games where AMD's performance is neutral or negatively affected by drivers, it would be less of a clear-cut decision and more of a can-you-live-with-it kind of scenario. I feel that AMD should have priced these cards more aggressively to capture the market while Nvidia is focusing on the AI field. I won't be surprised if they choose to reduce their prices shortly after the initial release, following a similar approach they did with the 7900 XT and XTX. In such scenario, the 7800 XT could emerge as a preferred choice for the mid-range builds. What do you guys think? Also, do share some feedback on how our review of these cards are going, and what you'd like to see more or less of, so we can adapt and improve. Check out the links in the description below for more information of any of the items we covered in the video. We hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.